The unshakable life. Yes. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. This last week I was reading a news article that was so filled with fear and anxiety that after I read it, I, I, I felt a little bit of that twinge of anxiety uh, come in my own heart. Uh, they were talking about all the things that are happening in the world and the things that are about to happen. And as they were talking, they were, they were saying, you need to get ready for impending doom and disaster because it's coming. They encouraged everybody to dig their own water well and to get a bunch of stuff stocked up that doesn't deteriorate so that when it comes, you will be able to keep yourself safe. They said you need, you need to have a plan so that when the electric grid goes down, uh, you will be able to protect yourself. Uh, they went through all of the steps that you should take to make sure if your car is still running, uh, to uh, be sure and hide it so nobody would steal it. And uh, it just went on and on and on. By the time I got through reading that article, I said, why did you read that? <laughs> and there's, there's where a lot of people are living. And one of the tragedies that I see is it's not just people that do not know Jesus. That's right. There are some people in the world who, who claim to be a Christian. I, I believe that they are. Don't doubt their, their faith. But they are looking at things, the circumstances in their own life, the circumstances around them, the things that are about to happen in the world, and they do not trust God. I, I need to tell you again, and I probably am going to head toward a series, uh, I feel it coming on, about God. You need to know that the Lord your God is sovereign and almighty. He is not puny or weak, and things are in his control. God has a plan, and he's working his plan. Now, God's plan does not always fit in with the things that I want him to do, my plan. And I'm sure that happens with every one of us. Uh, but we're serving a God who is sovereign, all-knowing, all-powerful, and he's not lost control. And every one of you should rejoice in that, that God has not lost control. The devil may want to come in and say, I've got the upper hand, but he is not true. He is a liar. He's always been a liar. And you don't have to believe his tale, his lie, his discourse. If you do, you're going to be overwhelmed with the things that are coming on in this world. Right. I want to read to you from the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, from two different translations. The Holman Christian Standard Bible says, Don't worry about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. The NIV says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. One of these say, do not worry. The other says, do not be anxious. Worry is a destructive mental and spiritual process that is contrary to God, God's nature, the love, the care, the protection, the very nature of God. And if you, I want to expand this this morning uh, beyond just worry and anxiety. And it deals with every attitude of our mind. You can become depressed, it's not worry. You, you can become discouraged over the things that's going on. You, you can become, I mean, there's all kinds of emotions that we get inside of us. And I, I would like to tell you, don't become discouraged about anything. Don't worry about anything. 
Don't become depressed about anything. You see what I'm saying? But in everything, with everything that you're facing, bring it to God. God has the answers for you. Now, here's one of the problems that a lot of people have. They present their need to God and things do not work the way that they thought that they would work. And because they didn't work the way that they thought that they would work, they, they give up on God or they become uh, worry, worryful, depressed, etc. You need to know that God is in control and we're going to go through different stages or cycles of life. That's right. I would love to tell you that when you're 90, you're still going to be able to run like you did when you were 20. Yeah. Hallelujah. I can receive that. <laughs> it's not true. You're going to go through different phases in life. And some of the things that's going to happen is you're going to lose some things that you want to hold on to. And, and Satan will come with this message to you and say, because this happened in your life, you can't trust God. Because, because things are going so bad in the world, you can't trust God. But if you, if you read your Bible, and I encourage you, crack the book, read your Bible, you will find that God has told us these things are going to happen. And if, if God knows ahead of time these things are going to happen, then how can I keep from being anxious and worrying when they happen in my life? Is I trust God. Hallelujah. I trust God that in the things that are going on, God sees what's going on. So he says, don't worry or be anxious about anything, but make your request known to God. And God is going to help you. Hallelujah. That's good news. Hallelujah. Now, just in case you are a worrier or whatever it might be, go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 30. We're going to read a few verses. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Verse 31. Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after for after all these things, the Gentiles, the unbelievers, that's really what it's saying. See, for your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. Verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry. Verse 34. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So Jesus gave us a specific list of things that we should not worry about. Don't worry about your clothes. Don't worry about your food. Don't worry about your water, what you drink. And big one, don't worry about your future. That almost covers everything, doesn't it? Then he gave us a specific reason for putting away worry. He says, for your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. Right. You see, this gets back to faith in God and relying upon him and knowing that there is a God that can help you in all of these situations. I know, I know, I know because I've been through enough stuff. I've had enough experiences. I have put God to the test enough to see what he has done in my life. Amen. I could not have made it through the things that I have made it through. I could not have faced the things that I have faced if I did not have this confidence that I have a God in heaven who's greater than these things. I know, I know that my heavenly father knows that I have need of all of these things. Right. 
I, I suppose that every one of us has to answer this personally. Do you believe that God knows? Do you believe that God knows what you are facing? Philippians 4 helps us develop a right attitude. Oh, this is good. Verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. I like to look at that. The Lord is at hand in two ways. Number one, he's coming soon. And number two, he's here. Yes, amen. Verse six, be anxious for nothing. Don't worry about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known, made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind. Then he says in verse 8, Finally, brethren, fellow believers, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, lovely, of a good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things and the God of peace will be with you. Now, I think that it's imperative that we look at this last uh, two verses. You've got to change individually what you think about. Right. If you're worrying about something, if you're depressed about something, if you're overwhelmed about something, the worst thing you can do is sit and meditate on it all day long. If you're facing adversity, if you're facing difficulty, the worst thing you can do is sit there in the corner with your head to the corner and, and start saying, oh, I'm not going to make it. Things are going to get worse. I don't understand why this has happened to me. No, rather than that, you need to change the way that you're thinking and start lifting, exalt your thoughts toward God and realize that there is a God in heaven who is able to help you. So you have to do something yourself. Whatever things are of a noble or of a good report, whatever things are just, pure, lovely, of virtue, praiseworthy, start thinking about those things. Now, I, I've been through enough that I, in my experiences, I know there are times in life with the things that we go through that it's hard to change the way that you think. Have you ever been there? You're so overwhelmed with what's going on that your mind uh, just immediately goes to that. I, I have found when that's going on that even in my dreams at night, that my dreams will be tormented by the things that I've been meditating on, the things that are worrying me, concerning me, disappointing me. They will they will creep into my, my dreams. It will be on, on a different level, something that I have not experienced, but it's still in my mind and it's in my heart. So I have to I have to grab a hold of my thoughts and my heart and my mind. You, the scripture says you possess your own soul by, by doing this. Grab a hold of things and say, I refuse. You know, you need to get a hold of yourself, not just a hold of the devil. You need to get a hold of yourself. And, and let me say it another, another thing. You need to get a hold of yourself and not just get a hold of God. That's right. Sometimes we are our worst enemy. Good preaching, Pastor. <laughs> Sometimes we are our worst enemy. And we cause ourselves so much hurt. We need to change the way that we are thinking. Change the direction that we're going. And start seeing what is it that God is doing in my life. I want to tell you again. God is working in your life. Yes. The word for worry or anxious combines two Greek words. The word merizo, which means divide, and nuas, which means mind. And it literally means a divided mind. So a person who is worrying has a divided mind. James 1 and 8 says, a double-minded man is unstable 
in all of his ways. So to be double-minded is to be wavering, uncertain, doubting, divided in interest. And this, I, I think you will see if you've ever been caught up in the cloud of worry that you have trouble focusing, trouble staying true to what it is you have purposed. And so we have to, we have to bind up our mind, get a hold of our double thinking. How, how do we think double? On one side we say, God is going to carry me through. God is my strength and my source. And on the other side we say, I don't know how I'm going to make it. On one side we say, I trust God and I know He's never failed me. And on the other side we say, look at what's going on. Disaster is on the, on the horizon. We've got to somehow put our mind and our thoughts on a God who is going to take care of us. I know that we're in the last days. And I know evil men and seducers are going to get worse. And I know that, that we are in a day when, when the enemy of our soul is rising up. But I also so know that my God has not lost control. He's still watching over his children. He's still fighting for us. And the things that are going to happen in this world are not out of his control. Praise his holy name. So God has given us some specific help in overcoming worry and anxiety. First, we must find good things in life and choose to rejoice. Philippians 4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. Does anybody know what always means? That means all of the time. And again, I say rejoice. So we have to develop a life of rejoicing. Now I know this is hard. Instead of complaining, Rejoice. I don't like eggshells in my eggs. But I can rejoice that the eggs that I had that didn't have eggshells in them were good. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? You can sit there and focus on all of the negativity and all of the things that are going wrong uh, and, and it will overwhelm you because there are enough things going wrong. You know, just this week, I don't know how many times, but it was more than, more than three or four. Somebody nearly ran us off the road. I could get so mad at that that I, I developed this uh, rug rage. Well, I'm going to chase them down. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to make them pay. You know, and it gets inside of you. And the more you yield yourself to those things that are oppressive and destructive, the worse it will get in your life. Yeah. Choose to rejoice. Develop this lifestyle of rejoicing. Thank God they didn't hit me. Thank God that he's protected me. Thank God that I have made it through. Thank God that I'm still breathing. Thank God that I can still rejoice. Thank God for the food that I have on my table. Thank God for his goodness. God is a good God. This brings us to the next step of a worry-free life. Second, identify the situations that initiate worry and choose to trust instead of worry. Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. As soon as you identify those things that uh, bring you anxiety or worry, you need to build trust around those things. Celebrate everything that God has done for you. This is, this is big in your life. Uh, many people, when COVID came, they, they came down with COVID and it changed their life. It changed their, their body. And they, they developed an attitude as a result of the things that happened. Now, I, I picked on COVID because it's something that people are still contending with. 
But you can deal with the same thing with every other issue that you face in life. As soon as this thing happens, as soon as what has come against me, as soon as this battle, as soon as this hospital visitation, as soon as this hit my house or hit my car or this disaster or the loss of this loved one or the, or the loss of this job or whatever it is that you want to, to focus upon, whatever it is that's causing this anxiety or worry, as soon as you do, can see it, define it, you need to change. How can I change? Go to Psalms 103. Uh, the whole chapter is good, but I'm just going to look at verse 3 through 5. He forgives all my sins, is all my diseases, redeems me from death, crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things and my youth is renewed like the eagles. Wow, there's some things that you could be meditating on. Yes, I faced some things, I have failed. Instead of sitting there and saying, I'm nothing but a failure, I'm a weakling, I cannot make it through. These things are controlling my life. No, let's put some periods on some things and say, no, the Lord is the one who forgives my sins. The Lord is the one who heals my diseases. The Lord is the one who carries me through these things. He takes me from the realm of death and he crowns my life with his love and his tender mercy. You can see this if you will only press past the things that you're facing. That's right. Every one of us in this room have a living testimony of the love and the mercy and the goodness of God in your life. Had it not been for Him, we would have been destroyed a long time ago. So put your full trust in God. So how can we develop trust in God? 1 Peter 5 and 7. Cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. I like the word cast. It means throw it away. Psalms 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in times of trouble. Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So I've got to do this. I've got to stop. I've got to stop. Let me say it again. I've got to stop in the midst of what's going on and say, God, I choose to trust in you. Hallelujah. I see what you're doing. You know, God is working. I have an adversary. There is an enemy of your soul and he's trying to destroy you and destroy your faith. But I have one who is greater than him. He's not only working in this world, he's working in my life. Greater is he who is in me than he's in who is in the world. I have him on my side and I know I acknowledge him in my way. So you can trust God in every situation. I want you to hold on to that statement. Because in the United States, we are so blessed. We demonstrate our trust most when we take this third step to conquer worry. And that's we choose to pray. Psalms 55, 22 from the Amplified, it says, cast your burden on the Lord. Releasing the weight of it. You don't really cast your burden on the Lord if you hold on to the weight of it. That's right. And he will sustain you. He will never allow the consistently righteous to be moved make the slip, fall, or fail. So when you are facing these things, and again, I want to broaden this outside of worry and anxiety to cover all of these other areas. When you're facing these things, what you've got to do is cast the burden of, of it over on the Lord. I know that sometimes the very act of that makes you feel like, well, I don't care anymore. No, you didn't care. 
But you're casting the, the burden, the weight of it on the Lord. And he will what? Sustain you. He will lift you up. He will bring you out of it. He knows how. And when you demonstrate trust in God, God knows how to help you. Hallelujah. Philippians 4 and 6 again. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So trustful prayer is this prayer that says, God, I depend on you. Yes. I can't make it without you. Lord, I believe in you. I believe in a God who is almighty. I believe in a God who loves my soul. I believe in a God who has my best interest in mind. You see, this goes way out there farther than getting everything that you want. It's saying, God, even if I lose the thing that I care for the most, I still trust you. I choose, God, to rely on you. Because, friends, without God, how are you going to make it? Can you, can you navigate the course of this life with your own wisdom and your own strength? I don't even know what tomorrow is going to bring as far as the details of my life. The only thing that sustains me is knowing that I have a God who is in control of today. He's in control of tomorrow. And praise God, he's in control of eternity. Amen. I can trust him. So I stand on his promises in every situation. I've got a list of things. And I don't have time this morning. I want to take time to give every one of them to you. I'd like to read all of these verses. So I'm going to go through them in rapid course. And uh, if you want the list, uh, we'll print it out for you. It's on the web anyway. Stand on God's promises in prayer for every situation in sickness and in health. Jeremiah 30 and verse 17. God says, I will restore health to you. In Isaiah 53 and 5, he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, by his stripes were healed. When you're burdened, Psalms 55 and 22 says, cast your burden on the Lord. When you need safety, Deuteronomy 31 and 8, the Lord goes before you and will be with you. He will not forsake you. Do not fear Deuteronomy 33, 27, the eternal God is your refuge and underneath are his everlasting arms. When you're facing fear and trouble, Psalms 9 and verse 9, the Lord is our refuge. In times of trouble, he will be there. He'll help you. He is our protection. Psalms 91 and verse 14, God said, when we set our love upon him, he will deliver us in times of trouble. He'll give us long life and satisfy us. 2 Timothy 4 and 18, the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me. Hallelujah. When you're needing food and supplies, Philippians 4 and 19, my God shall supply all of my need according to his riches and glory by Christ. In Matthew 6 and 31, don't worry what you will eat, drink, etc., because the Lord will take care of you. When you're brokenhearted, he will heal the brokenhearted and bind up their wounds. When you fall, Micah 7 and verse 8, when I fall, I will rise again. Zephaniah 3 and 17, the Lord your God is in your midst. Hallelujah. You can rejoice in him. He will keep you in these difficult times. When you're going through trouble and temptation, Romans 8 and verse 37, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. And I am persuaded, hallelujah, that nothing shall be able to set me from the love of God that is in Christ. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted above what you are able, but will within all temptations make a way for you to escape so that you may be able to bear it. This brings us back to the definition of worry and anxiety and the fourth step to conquering these. Worry 
means to have a divided mind. And so on one side, I'm saying, Lord, I trust you with my life, my future, my hopes, my dreams, my family, my children, my situations. And on the other side, the divided mind says, I don't think we're going to make it. How are we going to survive? So we've got to do this. Learn to think like God wants us to think. That's right. First Peter 1 and 13, therefore, prepare your minds. That's going to take work. Prepare your mind for action. Be self-controlled. Don't let it just run wild. Set your hope fully on the grace that is to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Something amazing happens, and I've seen this in all kinds of situations. Something amazing happens when we decide to set our mind on the Lord and begin to focus on Him and realize God is in control. Philippians 4 and 8 gives us help with all of our thoughts. Look at this. Oh, it's, it's amazing. He says to think on what things are true. So keep false thoughts out of your mind. Don't allow the enemy to dictate the future. Yes. Things that are worthy of respect, honest, good, respectable. Things that are just, that means things that are ethical, just, impartial, and righteous. Think on things that are pure. Things that are contaminated, that are not stained with sin. Blameless and clean things. Yes. Think on things that are lovely. Think about things that are beautiful, magnificent. Think about things that are of good taste. Think on things that are commendable or of a good report. Get that bad report out of your mind. Start thinking about the things that God is doing and God wants to do in your life. Amen. Think on things that are excellent and praiseworthy. Well, that's just... This verse is an assignment for every one of you in every one of the things that you're going through. You've got to practice this. So here are the steps we've covered today to stop anxiety and worry and a world of other hurts. First of all, choose to rejoice. Number two, choose to trust. Choose to pray and change the way that you think. As I was meditating and praying about this, I started to scrap the whole sermon because I did not want to focus on worry. Because in my estimation, and I may be wrong, I probably am wrong, that we Christians don't worry. <clears throat> but we do become discouraged, afflicted, challenged. We experience loss, hurt, go through difficulties. And if, if by chance you do worry, it's for you. God kept stirring my heart. And I, I would love to be able to touch your soul. I can't, but the Holy Spirit can. And I feel the Holy Spirit is probing into you right now. And he's, God is saying to you personally, I will help you with that if you will let me. Will you let him? If, if in some way this sermon has touched where you are, what you're going through, 
slip your hand up so I know I can pray for you. There's just many of you. Receive from him. 